Okay, welcome. As I take you through the topic of magnetism, uh, it is the first topic in Form 2, and uh, I would like you to enjoy the topic. So, uh, magnetism is a very interesting topic, especially when you are doing it there in the lab, because there are uh, some practicals that you have to enjoy it. Apart from learning, you must enjoy it. Uh, so, you know, when you guys were young, uh, you used to break a radio, then check what is inside. Any gadget, any electronic device, like a radio, a watch, a phone, a television, they have a magnet inside. I don't know how young boys get to know it. Uh, they break it they will break a, a radio they know very well they will receive a very thorough repeating in the evening but they have to break it they remove their magnet um, some used to call it spark because it used to attract some materials and not others we may not have a specific definition of what a magnet is but we just say a magnet is a material or a substance that attracts some materials but not others mm. So, we are going to see various uh, types of magnets, but before that, let's look at the objectives that we are supposed to cover in this topic. Then we look at the content that we are going to take all through this particular topic. So, uh, by the end of this topic, the learner should be able to do the following. You are supposed to, have to know how to describe the properties and uses of magnets. Identify magnetic and non-magnetic materials. Uh, state the basic law of magnetism. Describe the patterns of magnetic field. Describe methods of magnetization and demagnetization. Explain magnetization and uh, demagnetization using the domain theory. Construct a simple compass. Uh, the contents will be magnets, their properties, their uses, magnetic and non-magnetic materials, basic law of magnetism, magnetic field patterns, magnetization and uh, demagnetization, domain theory of magnetism, care of magnets, construction of a simple magnetic compass. That one you can do it. It's not uh, a difficult thing. Uh, so, I say that we may not have a specific definition of what a magnet is. Uh, but, a magnet is a material that uh, uh, attracts some magnetic materials. It attracts some materials but not others. The original magnet was a stone called iodo stone which was found in one of the valleys by one of the curious scientists who was walking around then he realized why is this stone different from the others it could pick some materials from, from the ground but not all the materials then he developed interest and came with the present day magnets uh, so but we have magnetism we can define it very well magnetism is the ability of a magnet to attract some materials and repel others ability of a magnet to attract some materials and repel others we have several types of magnets actually and magnets are um, categorized depending on their shape uh, yeah the shape of the magnet will give us its name later on we shall look at we have permanent magnets and temporary magnets we shall look at it no problem so the following uh, permanent magnets are known depending on the shapes we have the bar magnets the ring magnets horseshoe magnet and u-shaped magnet horseshoe magnet is a is a magnet that behaves like the shoe of a horse um this is a bar magnet it looks like a basso you can see it eh? it's a bar magnet that, that looks like a basso uh we have the ring magnets you look at, at the way th they are uh, th they are forming rings um u-shaped magnet it looks like a letter u Yes, and each magnet, remember, it has a North Pole and South Pole. Mm, this one looks like U, but the upper part, this part, um, is highly curved. They're almost touching each other. So, it is called a horseshoe magnet. Now, properties of a magnet. Some of the properties include the magnetic strength property, directive, um, a directional property, magnetic poles, attraction, and repulsion property. Um... Let's start with magnetic poles. Remember, a magnet has North Pole and a South Pole. Mm, so, how to explain this? 
property of magnetic poles is that the strength of a magnet lies within the polarities or within the poles. Look at this magnet that I've given you here. This magnet, um, we sprinkled iron filings all through it, but we realized that the iron filings only cling at their ends, at their polarities, at their poles. Why? Because the strength of this particular magnet lies within the poles. Yes. A uh, directional property of a magnet. If a magnet is suspended by a thread and is free to rotate, it will just say, you know, rest in the north-south direction. North-south direction. Why? Th this one we shall learn in our next video. Mm, the earth itself is a magnet. It has a magnet within or inside the earth that is going to uh, control any other magnet on the earth's surface. So when you suspend a magnet, the north pole will point to the north pole of the geographical earth and the south pole will point to the uh, geographical south pole of the earth. That's a directional property of a magnet. That is what a magnet d uh, does when it is being uh, suspended. And uh, you are supposed to suspend it so it's one of the ways in which you can use to find the polarities of a magnet because if you suspend a magnet and you are sure of the north pole of the earth then where the um the pole that points to, to the north pole of the earth will be the north pole of the magnet um magnetic um poles property or uh, breaking a magnet this one when you break a magnet this is what is, is going to happen uh, when you break a magnet like this one, eh, you are going to obtain two magnets. And those two magnets that you have obtained will be having all the properties of a magnet. You continue breaking them, whatever the small pieces you will obtain, they will still be having the magnetic properties, all of them. Yes. Um, attractive property. This one is somehow wide. Eh? A, a magnet can attract certain magnetic materials like the nickel, iron, steel, and cobalt. There are so many. Um, but just to mention, eh, and just to make sure that you understand this, not all metals are magnetic, as some of you think. Yes. Mm. Magnetic materials are those that can be attracted by magnets. And I've given you examples. Iron, nickel, uh, you know, there are very many. Non-magnetic materials are those that cannot be attracted by a magnet. For example, copper, brass, aluminium, glass, wood, graphite. All non-metals, first of all, are non-magnetic. Then some of the non—I mean, some of the metals like copper, brass, and aluminium are also non-magnetic. So anything that is magnetic must be a metal. Then we have another one called ferromagnetic materials. Are magnetic materials that are strongly attracted by a magnet strongly attracted to or by a magnet an example is iron the soft iron you know um the latin name for iron is ferrous and now we are saying ferromagnetic materials okay um so that, that's it there is a law called the basic law of magnetism um, which states that light poles rebel and light poles attract it's the basic law of magnetism uh, repulsion occurs if north pole of a magnet is brought near the north pole of a suspended magnet. The same with south pole and south pole. Um, look at this. North pole, north pole, repulsion. South pole, south pole, repulsion. Then north pole, south pole, attraction. Uh, you can relate to the charges, the positive and um, negative charges in electrostatics. They behave exactly the same way. And it was there that we also defined the basic law of electrostatics. Mm, there's a question here. I want you to get it and see it very well. Why is repulsion the only sure test for polarity of a magnet? We have three ways. We have repulsion, we have attraction, and we have suspending a magnet on a thread so that it can rest in north south uh, direction. I can dismiss that one that it's not the surest way because uh, when you suspend a magnet, there are many other forces that uh, will determine its direction. Uh, first of, of it is that... Um, if there is influence of air, then it may not rest in north-south that uh, direction. It only works in a vacuum. Now, uh, for attraction, I can also dismiss it in this manner. Um, attraction is not the shortest because it can occur between unlike poles of a magnet or between a magnet and unmagnetized magnetic material. 
a material cannot be a magnet but ma a magnetic material then the magnet attracts it and you will think it is the opposite polarity no so it is not the surest way um repulsion is the surest test for polarity because repulsion can only occur between like poles of magnets only magnets rebel each other but not between a magnet and a magnetic material get that one very clear mm, a question again describe how you would verify the basic law of magnetism given two bar magnets and a piece of thread oh i let me give you in my next slide <laughs> uh procedure suspend one bar magnet bring the north pole of another magnet towards the north pole of the suspended magnet and observe what happens bring the same uh, pole towards the south pole of the suspended magnet uh -huh. uh, observations and conclusion a north pole attracts a south pole and repels a north pole wi while a south pole repels a south pole meaning what like poles repel while unlike poles attract now le let me tell you something here um in most cases in any exam you are doing you have to get at least one question of asking you uh, to describe describe by the way will always take three marks or four at most now the first uh, mark comes from procedure another one comes from observations and conclusion in fact we, we are supposed to break this into two i mean uh, observations and conclusion so that observations takes its one mark you make now the conclusion it takes another mark that is how it should be so uh, this is magnetism keep on scrolling to the next video uh, until you are done with the topic i will also give you questions at the end of the last video of this topic keep scrolling may god bless you i wish you all the best as you are becoming that engineer you want to be thank you